Considering that Pokemon's 7th generation is so driven by narrative, it shocks me that two Pokemon in particular were omitted from the Alolan National decks, Solrock and Lunatone. The literal Sun and Moon Mons were left out of the games of the same name. Today, I'm here to prove that these exclusions were unjust as I attempt to beat Pokemon Sun and Moon using only a Sun and a Moon. As we begin our journey, Howe's Litten had no idea what hit them, as a massive Power Gem would Oko the Kitty. Power Gem, really, is probably what you're thinking. Yes, the 80 base power stab move is indeed part of our Lunatone's moveset. While I do acknowledge that options such as this, Moon Blast, Psy Shock, or Flare Blitz are typically intended to be taught by a move tutor, they're technically level 1 moves and legal for this challenge. And while they may be extremely overpowered early on, we will definitely need these moves further into the game. Gen 7 is no slouch. Of course, for now, we plow through some trainers in another battle with Hal before commencing our first trial in the Island Challenge. While this trial is based around normal types, the Pokemon we take on throughout are Alolan Rattata and Raticate, the normal dark types who are weak to Moonblast, making this an extremely easy win. As we progress towards our first Kahuna fight, I do want to mention a couple of rules in case you were curious. As is typical, I'll be following level caps as closely as I can. As always, no items in battle, and even though we learn them throughout the game, I'll also be avoiding using Z moves. This is a showcase for our Sun and Moon. We don't need any gimmicks. With that out of the way, let's take on Kahuna Hala. Luckily for us, he utilizes fighting types, who are weak to Moon's Psyshock. Mankey, Crab Brawler, and Makuhita all go down quickly to finish it off. After a brisk stay on Melee Melee Island, we're off to Akala with our sights set on Lana's Trial, which is the first that raises a real question for us. Her water types boast super effective moves against our two Rock Psychic Mons. We made our way through the first several Pokemon easily, but Power Gym did under half to the totem as Water Gun... Yeah, that isn't ideal. We needed to crit, and we didn't land it. Which procced Wishy Washy Citrus Berry. The rest of the battle was a wash. First step to a hopeful success was to get Moon up to the level 20 cap and go at it again. Power Gem this time did over half, but just enough to prompt the berry once more. Water Gun again did massive damage, but the Absorb Bulb that we stole from a Petalil in Melee Melee Meadow would raise our special attack. This meant Power Gem was now strong enough to take out Wishy Washy on the next turn. One more of the same move was Overkill on the Leftover Fish, and that completed the second trial for our duo. The Fire Trial was next, and on paper this should be the easiest of all seven trials we're going to face, and that was pretty accurate. Two Alolan Marowaks and Magmortar were easy one-shots for Moon. Salazzle did survive the first hit thanks to stat boosts, but Toxic wasn't nearly enough to avoid the inevitable victory for Moon. As we look to complete the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back trial sprint through Akala Island, Mallow's grass types are waiting for us, and if you've been curious when you'd finally see Sun in battle, this is their time to shine. A couple Fomantis and Shinodic didn't survive the fire, but the Totem Lorantis would be a different beast. Thanks to their held Power Herb, Solar Blade was used in a single turn, immediately knocking out Sun. Moon was able to get off a Power Gem as Laurentis charged, but the Blade was well more than enough to knock them out on the following go, wiping us out. After seeing that battle play out, albeit very quickly, I decided to lead with Moon to absorb the KO from the single turn Solar Blade. In an unexpected twist, Moon's held Quick Claw allowed them to get off solid damage before their swift demise. With that damage done and Power Herb wasted for Lorantis, Sun comes in to clean it up with Flare Blitz, which landed a knockout. Honestly, I'm not sure that would have killed without the Quick Claw damage from Power Gem. Very clutch from Moon. The ally cast form went down in a couple of moves to follow as we completed our fourth trial, over halfway through the Island Challenge. So, if it seems like we're moving insanely fast throughout this challenge, it's because we are. The dynamic duo is simply too strong for our current opponents, but that's about to change. After battling quite a few trainers, including Team Skull 2nd in Command Plumeria, we made our way to Olivia, the Kahuna of Akala Island. She carries Rock-type Pokémon, which at a glance don't appear to be an issue for Sun and Moon, but with no super effective moves against the extremely bulky Pokémon like Nosepass and Bulldor, that left the door wide open for chip damage and, worst of all, Thunder Wave from the lead. 
The paralysis paid off right away as Olivia sent in a super potion to prolong this first matchup. Another full paralysis delayed the eventual KO and left Moon under half health as Lycanroc came in. The Midnight Form Wolf only knows two moves, but one of them is the super effective dark move Bite, which caused a flinch. We don't outspeed with Sun, meaning they'd fall in the next turn. Predictably, the Paralyzed Moon was also unable to outspeed, and with a lower physical defense, there was no doubt that Bite was going to knock them out. We now had Moon up to the cap of 27, and Sun not far behind as we went back for a second attempt. This time, I opted to try for stat boosts to carry us through. Cosmic Power a few times, followed by Fire Spin for constant chip damage. This simply went way worse than my original strategy, as Sun fell with Nosepass still in the yellow. Moon came in to try and somehow salvage the battle, landing a quick KO. Lycanroc was still a major roadblock though. Quickclaw was able to proc allowing a cosmic power to provide some hope of surviving a bite. And not only did that prove to be the case, but the dark move did less than half to Moon. A second bite left Moon at 13 HP, with Power Gem dealing over half damage to the foe. And Quickclaw does it again, allowing Moon to move first and knock out Lycanroc. Unfortunately though, there's still one more Pokemon. Boldor carrying Sturdy would survive the first hit from Moon, and Rock Blast would kill on just two hits. So close to a legendary win for Moon, but it was just another failed attempt. The third try, I went for the same concept, but this time led with Fire Spin to start the damage process earlier, but this attempt hardly went any better. Try after try, the losses were piling up. And I mean piling. A horrendous combination of lucky paralysis hits, flinches from bite, and probably some smooth brain attempts from me left us 13 attempts in the hole still searching for answers against Olivia. Throughout those attempts, I'd realized the Grass Knot TM in my bag could come in handy, but it was no get out of jail free card in this case. Still, it had been added to Moon's repertoire a handful of battles ago. Most of those previous attempts, Sun had been leading trying the Cosmic Power strategy, but this time I led with Moon. I spammed Cosmic Power until we sat at plus 6 special and physical defense before using Grass Knot twice to KO Nosepass. After several attempts were ended by Lycanroc's Bite, this time it only did 12 HP to Moon after those boosts. We hit through the Paralysis. Another Bite left Moon at a dozen HP, but a second consecutive hit through Paralysis allowed Grass Knot to take down Olivia's Ace, just the second attempt to accomplish that feat. A full paralysis did finally strike, but Moon somehow still lived through Rock Blast on his shred of health to deliver a massive Grass Knot. Sturdy left Boldor alive, but he missed Rock Blast. Olivia's Super Potion couldn't stop another hit through paralysis from taking out her last mod. Moon is him, single-handedly defeating the Kahuna on 3 HP and ending what had been the toughest battle in this challenge so far. After that extremely brutal fight, I was certainly ready for a change of scenery, and luckily, it was time to leave Akala Island. It was off to Aether Paradise for a massive lore dump before hitting Ula Ula Island for the next leg of the island challenge. I was a bit caught off guard by the battle with Hal right after you disembark from the boat in Melee City, but Moon was able to pretty easily take out a Lowland Raichu before he sent in... a new Pokemon that I've yet to see on his team, Leafeon. Sun's Flare Blitz did just over half, and Giga Drain didn't KO, but it did heal Leafeon enough to survive another fire move, leaving Sun vulnerable. The next turn, the Evolution did outspeed and land a big chunk of damage on Moon, but they were still able to take down the opponent with Psychic. Toracat was last and is weak to Power Gem, but they outspeed with Bite and kill Moon. Another loss. But to my surprise, this battle is not a required victory meaning we just take that hit and continue to roll with the punches, now with more awareness for battles we might be stepping into. A quick bus ride up to the Hakulani Observatory was met in haste by Molain, the Steel-type trainer. His three Pokémon proved to be a really tough matchup for our Sun and Moon, who both boast vulnerabilities to Steel. His trio of Skarmory, Alolan Dug Trio, and Matang presented a mix of offensive and defensive firepower. Our first attempt ended quickly after leading with Moon, who was taken out by Doug Trio. I attempted multiple different strategies with Moon leading, including using the Cosmic Power strategy a few times to start. But ultimately the best strat? Waiting for RNG to fall my way. 
Power gems from Moon would take out Skarmory quickly, but the key in this fight was that the opponent used Air Cutter over their super effective Metal Claw. That led to a clean switch into Sun, who tanked a hefty Claw from Dugtrio before Okoing the Ground Steel type with Flare Blitz. This allowed Sun to stay in for another turn against Matang, leaving their mark with another Blitz that brought Matang into the red. Knowing Molain would opt to use his Super Potion, I decided to Cosmic Power not once, but actually three turns in a row, hoping to outlast the pseudo. But ultimately, this attempt also ended in vain. I decided to shift my strategy to using Sun in lead. A Fire Spin and Flare Blitz combined for the takedown of Skarmory, as the bird had used Air Cutter once more. This allowed for Sun to tank a Sucker Punch and deliver another Flare Blitz, which KO'd both Mons on the field. Can a full health Moon take on Matang head-to-head? -head? We were about to find out. Six turns of Cosmic Power with four Pursuits and two Zen Headbutts in return allowed Moon to start dealing damage while taking just a few HP of damage against super effective moves. As Sun's health slowly ticked down, one, two, three, four, heal, five, six, seven, and eight power gems finally did the job, leaving Moon victorious with 21 HP to spare. Luckily, the trial was nowhere near as difficult, with Moon killing the Totem Vicavolt in two hits with power gem. The ally charger bug did land a thunder wave, but after a swap into sun, Flare Blitz was an easy KO to wrap up our fifth trial win. After the victory, we headed to Melee Garden to meet up with Professor Kakui, and this is where we get our first look at Team Skull's leader, Guzma. His ace being the bug water type Mon Galissapod, I figured this would be a tough battle. But to my surprise, Sun survived a first impression before delivering a rock tomb for around half. The speed drop from that move also allowed Sun to go first on the next turn, and he would land a crit to kill. Ariados was no match for Moon, and we somehow escaped this fight without even losing a team member. That was quick. Back on track, we hit a Tapu village for what I anticipate being our toughest trial of the entire challenge. Acerola's Ghost Types Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar aren't an issue on their own, all carrying a weakness to Psychic. But the Totem? That's a different story. Mimikyu's Disguise is the first of several concerns here. In Gen 7, that ability still shields all damage on the first turn, giving the Ghost Fairy type a chance to hit us for super effective damage. But it actually opted for Mimic, which is a lucky break for us. Sun uses Fire Spin to break the Disguise and to provide chip damage over the next few turns. Luckily, Haunter shows up as the ally Pokemon. The other option is Gengar, who has Shadow Ball that would make quick work of our Mons. Sucker Punch and Shadow Claw do a massive number on Sun, but Rock Tomb and Fire Spin bring Mimikyu under half health. Even with the speed drop from Rock Tomb, the Totem still outspeeds though and KOs Sun with another Ghost move. Moon is hit with the same combo as Sun and somehow survives on just 4 HP. The returned Psychic is not enough to knock out Mimikyu, leaving no chance for victory. After looking over our options, I sub in the super effective Gyro Ball onto Sun's moveset and go for it again. The match started exactly the same, but with our new steel move, we did just barely more damage than before. But that actually was just enough extra damage for Moon to kill on the next move. Unfortunately though, Moon is not fast enough to outspeed Haunter, resulting in a devastating loss. So close. At this point, I knew exactly what to hope for when starting an attempt. I would need Mimikyu to waste their first turn with Mimic, which they only did about a third of the time overall. The next time this occurred, I was more prepared. The battle went exactly the same, with Sun bringing the Totem close enough for a one-turn KO from Moon's Psychic. But this time, our Lunatome was equipped with a held Citrus Berry. This would allow them to survive a Sucker Punch on the next turn and finish off Haunter, granting us another trial win our sixth out of the seven total trials. Our quick progress in the Island Challenge is put on hold, however, as the plot of the game picks up. We head to Po Town, the home of Team Skull, to retrieve a stolen Pokemon. Of course, this means many grunt battles, but it also means we're pitted against Guzma for the second time. Our first matchup just before the last trial was surprisingly easy. Hopefully this one proves to be the same. Galissapod uses his signature first impression that this time Oko's moon. Ouch. 
Sun sends in a rock tomb as Galissapod does a swords dance. Another tomb doesn't quite KO, but it does force the ace out due to emergency exit. Ariados did a surprising amount of damage with Fell Stinger, but two rock tombs was enough to take them out, leaving just Galissapod in red health. I figured this was an easy rock tomb KO, but I was shocked to see first impression sent out again. I wasn't aware that swapping would reset the ability to use this move. Thanks to the Fell Stinger damage, this was enough to knock out Sun and hand us our first loss to Team Skull. The next attempt I led with Sun, and got lucky as Guzma opted for Sword Stance on turn 1 instead of First Impression. This meant that two tombs would again force them out with Emergency Exit, with no damage done to Sun. But Fell Stinger and Sucker Punch from Ariados once again did a ton of damage before Rock Tomb would finish off the bug. First Impression was again within range to kill Sun, but this time Moon was still alive and at full health. Without the strong priority move, Power Gem easily finishes off Guzma and our time in Po Town. After being escorted back to Tapu Village, we're thrown into yet another battle, this time with Gladion. This one was fairly straightforward though, with an easy Oko on Golbat with Psychic, Sun took care of Type Null with a combination of Fire Spin, Rock Tomb, and Flare Blitz, and Moon survived a faint attack before Power Gem one-shot Sneasel. The onslaught of high-level trainer battles continued as we prepared to head to Aether Paradise. Before we embark on another trip though, we're stopped by Officer Nanu, the surprise kahuna of Ula Ula Island. Unfortunately, this is yet another major battle with the opponent carrying super effective weapons against our team. Nanu brings Dark-type Pokemon, leading with the Dark Ghost-type Sableye. Thankfully, Moon knows Moonblast, which is super effective against the foe. After taking a soft fake out, Moonblast leaves Sableye in the red, allowing them to get off a Shadow Ball. Well, at least we can take care of Sableye after they heal with two more blasts. Karakarok is also weak to Moonblast, but they actually outspeed Moon, killing them with an assurance, and Sun wouldn't make it through Karakarok either. After a couple more attempts and getting Moon up to the level cap, I went back at it. The Sableye matchup went the same but the training helps limit the damage from Shadow Ball. As Moon leveled up to 40 after KOing Sableye, they'd now be able to outspeed Krokorok and Persian to deliver back-to-back -back Okos with Moonblast. Our trip to Aether reveals the true villains in the Alola region, and that obviously leads us into several battles against lackluster opponents. But there's one encounter that surprised me. Right through this doorway is a back-to-back-to-back -back -back battle gauntlet. Each opponent has just one Pokemon, but the first being Alolan Muck proves to be a real force. His stab crunch two-shot Sun after one of their two Rock Tomb attempts connected. Moonblast was unable to KO Muck, leading to a crunch taking another massive chunk before a second blast would end the battle. But there's no healing between these three battles, meaning Moon at 40 HP must win the next two battles on their own. Magneton is a terrible matchup here as they resist all of Moon's attacks and have Mirror Shot and Flash Cannon, two super effective steel moves, leading to a knockout. I certainly didn't expect to lose any battles to random trainers in here. A heal at the Melee Pokemon Center and another boat ride to Aether allowed us to strategize for the next attempt. I led with Moon this time against Muck, and Power Gem did about half, but knock off nearly one shot Moon. With our Choice Scarf removed, Power Gem just barely misses the KO, leading to Moon falling. Sun swapped in and missed a Fire Spin. Turns out that wouldn't even matter, as after taking out Muck on the next turn, I learned that this Magneton has Sturdy that allows it to survive a Flare Blitz before killing Sun with Flash Cannon. We got pretty unlucky on that last attempt, so I keep the strategy the same. Moon this time is able to get a higher roll on Power Gem, taking out Muck in two hits. We're locked into leaving Moon out first, which is fine as Psychic does over half damage to break Magneton sturdy. After losing Moon to Flash Cannon, Sun sends in a Flare Blitz to take care of this match. Porygon 2 is the final of three opponents, and of course they carry Signal Beam, which is a super effective bug move. Luckily, Sun did not miss the 95% Rock Tomb on any of their three attempts to just barely squeeze out a W. Three attempts to hardly beat a few trainers? Oh boy, this is going to be a rough end game, isn't it? As we continue towards Lily's location, we quickly beat Faba and once again square off with Guzma. 
Moon leads and barely survives first impression before delivering a huge power gem to Oko Guzma's ace. I left the min against Masquerade, hoping for another power gem KO, but the foe outspeeds and kills with Bug Buzz. Sun had no better luck, getting one shot by the Buzz as well. A few attempts later, Sun was in the same position, but this time won what must have been a speed tie, easily defeating Masquerade with the quad effective Rock Tomb. Pinster survived the next Rock Tomb and returned a strong X Scissor, but Sun was able to barely survive in the red and send in the knockout blow on the next turn. Ariados was last in, and Moon was able to outspeed and finish off the bug and our final matchup with Guzma. Lusamine's true intentions are revealed as she opens up Ultra Wormholes across the region. Before she leaps into Ultra Space, though, she's got to get through us. Her lead Clefable sends in a couple of Moon Blasts for okay damage as we set up two Cosmic Powers with Moon. Psychic did around a third of their health, and Metronome delivered a resisted Psy Shock. A Psychic crit this time around, bringing Clefable into the red before another resisted move for Metronome. Power Gem was an easy KO to follow as Lusamine sent in Lilligant next. With multiple Cosmic Powers in place, I leapt in Moon, but they didn't outspeed and a Petal Dance was enough to take them out. It was the same story with Sun as we fell to the ground in defeat. As Lusamine hopped into the Ultra Wormhole, all I could think about was how we would even think of defeating her once we meet again in Ultra Space. We didn't even reach the Milotic or Miss Magius who also carry super effective moves against our duo. But for now, all we can do is press forward and continue to train our team. We set sail to Pony Island, the site of our final island trial. We ventured through Pony Wild, saw Hapu, appointed the new Kahuna of the island, and set our sights on the last Kahuna battle of the challenge. Her ground type Mons didn't really stand a chance as a lulling dog trio was okoed by a Flare Blitz, Mudsdale went down in one turn to Grass Knot, Gastrodon fell to two hits to the same move, and Flygon took just two Moon Blasts to kill. A refreshingly easy battle for us, the first we'd had in a while. The final trial, that being the Dragon type, was also a breeze. One Moon Blast, three Psychics, and a Flare Blitz were all it took to make quick work of the trial. I will note that I was over the level cap for the trial, but Hapu's levels were higher, so I went based on that for the cap, and there's many, many required trainers between her battle and the trial. Getting through the trial site allows access to the Altar of Moon, where Cosmoam evolves into Lunala and allows us to travel into Ultra Space where Lusamine awaits us. Her utter insanity is revealed as she merges forms with an Ultra Beast and challenges us to a battle. She again leads with Clefable, just like in Aether Paradise, but this time all of her Pokemon have stat boosts, just like Totem Pokemon would. I was leading with Moon and decided not to set up and just go after the lead. A Psychic did decent damage, but Clefable turned the tables and began to set up on me with Cosmic Power. Another Psychic led into Metronome, which selected the super effective Dark Move Punishment. A third Psychic would bring Clefable down under half health for literally two seconds before Moonlight would heal almost back to max. Yikes. Three Moon Blasts to follow would take out Moon. Sun came in and did what they could, but with Moonlight, Metronome turned Surf, and Moon Blast, the battle was quickly done. We couldn't even advance beyond the lead Mon. How on earth are we supposed to win this? Well, after hours of meticulous planning and several failed attempts, here's what we came up with. Moon would be our lead Mon, starting with Rock Polish to ensure that they'd outspeed any Pokemon on the team. They were taught the TM Charge Beam, which would deal damage and raise their special attack by one stage per use. That would be sent out three times in a row, trying to set up for not just the Clefable, but those who would follow. The fairy, however, was not a fan of our antics and sent in Metronome, which turned into Shadow Bone, a super effective ghost move that also dropped our defense stage. We continued to use Charge Beam and Clefable sent in Sludge Bomb via Metronome. Another beam put us at plus 5 special attack as Clefable healed with Moonlight. I felt like Yellow Health was my signal to start attacking the bulky opponent with Psychic, and they returned a weak stomp. Another Psychic was followed by Moonlight. And another Psychic from Moon led into the luckiest metronome of my life, including the metronome tournament, as Clefable used Psychic Terrain, which boosts the power of our attacks and doesn't help them one bit. 
Worry Seed was the next metronome selection as they had run out of Moonlight PP. It was almost like we went for the dunk and got an alley-oop from Clefable. Extremely lucky way for that to play out. In fact, this was the first time I'd been able to set up enough and still survive to defeat the lead Pokemon. Now, I needed to hope that our calculations were correct. Lilligan stood before us, the same Pokemon that wiped us out in the first match against Lusamine. But this time, we outsped and Oko them on with Psychic. Milotic is the scariest of the remaining foes, but surrounded in psychic terrain, all they could see was pink as we outspeed and Oko again. Miss Magius, you got it. Okoed was psychic. And beware, <laughs> yeah, they're even weak to the move. And with that, we'd finally beaten Ultra Lucinine. The trial and error of strategies I went through to win this battle was insane and pretty fun, although it was sometimes dreadful having to watch the same five minute cutscene before every attempt. I've also just got to mention, for all the hate that I've heard Sun and Moon get compared to the Ultra versions, there's no doubt in my mind that the story of this game is significantly better. Lily's story is touching, and the connection you feel between her and Nebi is great, and something that was somewhat cut short in the newer versions. Personally, I hope we get more story-driven Pokemon games in the future. So, with the Aether storyline wrapped up, there's one last thing to do. Head to the Pokemon League and become the first champion of Alola. But before we make our way up, Gladion stops us for a battle. His lead is Crobat, who only has moves that we resist, which allows us to use a Rock Polish and Cosmic Power before Okoing the Psychic. Silvalli is obviously the scariest Pokemon here, but with the defensive boost, we're able to do nearly half damage with Power Gem and survive a multi-attack, proccing our held Citrus Berry. Psychic leaves the foe with a sliver of health but they foolishly use Crush Claw, a move we resist. This allows Moon to knock them out on the next turn. Due to the Rock Polish we used earlier, we can outspeed an Oko Weavile with Power Gem. Lucario barely survives a Psychic and knocks out Moon with the Steel-type Z-move Corkscrew Crash. All those theatrics for Sun to easily win on the next turn. Alright, bud. And if you thought that was the last stop we'd make before reaching the League, you've got another thing coming. Hal also wants to face us again. With the amount of things playing against us in this fight, Thunderbolt Paralysis hits, missing charge beams, super effective moves from Leafeon and Incineroar, I would have never expected Komala to be the toughest Mon. She's bulky enough that we can't Oko them without setting up heavily beforehand and carries Woodhammer, an immensely strong grass move that one-shots both of our team members. Our saving grace, many attempts into this battle, was actually Hal himself. Our plan had been to use Rock Polish on turn 1, followed by multiple Charge Beams to follow, but for some reason on this specific attempt, Hao withdrew Raichu on turn 3. That led to Leafeon tanking a Beam before falling immediately to Psychic. Next in was Komala. On other attempts, by the time we made it this far, Moon had fainted and Sun wasn't set up enough to Oko, but this time, thanks to Hao, Psychic also took her out. Incineroar was also easy with their weakness to Power Gem, and then it all circled back to Alolan Raichu, who fell swiftly to Power Gem as well. That fight took seven attempts to win, but who knows how many it would have taken had Hao not swapped out Raichu there. Certainly a sigh of relief for me, though. With those slight distractions taken care of, it is finally time to enter the Pokemon League and take on the Elite Four. It all starts with the very first Kahuna, Hala from Iki Town. His fighting type mons are weak to Psychic, but his lead Hariyama is too bulky to knock out with Moon, so Sun leads here. They use an Earthquake and barely survive close combat. Another Earthquake would bring the opponent well within Moon's kill range, which they'd accomplish with Psychic on the next turn. Expecting easy KOs in the last three mons, I was shocked to see Polyrath actually survive here. He returned a Waterfall that leaves Moon with 10 HP. That's more than enough for them to send in 1, 2, 3, and 4 KOs with Psychic. Super clutch. Now, the next opponent is another Kahuna. This one from Akala Island. Yup, Olivia is back with her Rock types. But I feel like we've got a lot more options this time around. She leads with Relicanth, who annoyingly decides to use Yawn first turn every single attempt. Eventually, I retaught Grass Dot to Moon, though it didn't even land a kill with quad effective damage. 
I gambled for a miss of Hydra Pump on the next turn, and that actually paid off, saving Sun from any damage and keeping Moon awake. That was super lucky. Earthquake wouldn't quite KO the insanely defensive Probopass, but that was actually great for us as they sent in a Thunder Wave, which was canceled out by our held Cherry Berry. Not only did that waste a turn, but it also would waste Olivia's only full restore before back-to-back -back Earthquakes followed to knock out the rock with no damage done to either of our mons. The Pokemon who gave us so many issues back in Akala was sent in, her ace, Lycanroc. But really, the wolf was no match for us, as we ate a crunch and delivered two strong psychics for the KO. Back to Sun we'd go as Alolan Golem came in. His quad weakness to ground meant that just two Earthquakes would take the knockout. Carbink was the final Pokemon. We used an Earthquake for nearly half as they set up a Reflect. That nerfed our final Earthquake and Rock Tombs as Moonblast was able to KO Sun, but Moon was able to swap in and clean up with Psychic to finish off Olivia. Looking from the outside, our next opponent, Acerola, seemed to be the toughest matchup of the Elite Four. She brings Ghost types along with a bunch of possible KOing moves against our Rock Psychic Celestials. Moonblast was able to make quick work of her lead Sableye as the Grass Ghost type Delmize hit the battlefield. Sun's Flare Blitz nearly KO'd and landed a burn, but they did send in an Energy Ball hitting Sun for super effective damage. Luckily they survived in the red, proccing our held a Guav Berry. That granted us 50% of our health back. Super clutch for us that they decided to nerf this berry after the Gen 7 games. A heal was of course sent in on the next turn, but then the Flare Blitz would again nearly KO, leading to Acerola's Delmise falling on the next turn. Fortunately, recoil damage is calculated based on how much we dealt, meaning Sun survives to face Palisand. If Sun had fainted here, the battle would be lost. As Sun sent in their final blitz, doing a third to the opponent and fainting from recoil, you can see that Palisand wastes their Z-move on the non-existent opponent. That meant Moon could safely swap in and get greedy by using Rock Polish before a KO from Shadow Ball. That prior Rock Polish assured that Moon would be able to outspeed both Frostlass and Driftblim, defeating both with super effective power gems. We were on a roll, and that would not stop against Kaili, the Flying-type trainer. Power Gem was the true MVP here, knocking out Skarmory and Mandibuzz on two hits, as well as two Cannon and Oricorio in one hit, leaving the door open for a Psychic to one-shot Crobat. An extremely easy battle to officially defeat the Elite Four. But the toughest opponent in the entire game was yet to be seen. To become the champion, we must beat a team of extremely scary Pokemon. Perfectly EV trained and built to beat Sun and Moon. We need to take down Professor Kukui. And let me tell you, that is no easy task. After a ton of brainstorming, calculating, and failed attempts, here's the plan. The Soldiers. Sun. Moveset. Stone Edge. Flare Blitz. Earthquake. Cosmic Power. Moon. Moveset. Psychic. Charge Beam. Rock Polish. Shadow Ball. Turn 1. Lycanroc uses Stealth Rocks as Moon goes for Rock Polish. Turn 2. We use Charge Beam to up our special attack as Lycanroc hits us with Crunch. Turn 3. Another Beam, another Crunch, hope for survival. Turn 4. Send in a Psychic to kill Lycanroc. Snorlax joins the battle. Turn 5. Send in a Psychic as Snorlax uses Crunch. Turn 6. Another Psychic and Crunch. This time, Crunch will KO Moon. Send in Sun. Turn 7. Sun uses Stone Edge, hopefully knocking out Snorlax. Decidueye hits the field. Turn 8. Sun uses Flare Blitz. Fingers crossed for a knockout. Magnezone enters. Turn 9. Use the Quad Effective Earthquake to kill the foe. That, that is not part of the plan. Um, great. Okay, cool. So we forgot to factor in Sturdy. Um, that is less than ideal, as Magnezone knows Flash Cannon. 
No matter what we do on turn one, Magnezone will guaranteed knock out both Sun and Moon with that move. It's hopeless. Unless... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. <sighs> Let's head to Route 2. Once reaching the Pokemon League, this house is unlocked, and you can step inside to find a woman in a bedroom. In a strange twist of fate, this is Guzma's mother, and she gives us Guzma's old favorite TM. Swagger. Yeah. <laughs> we're using Swagger. And thank goodness we're playing Moon, and not the Ultra Counterpart, because this TM isn't available until beating the Pokemon League in that game. So, um, so where were we? Oh, yes. Magnezone enters. Turn 9. Sun uses Swagger, and we pray for a Confusion hit. Turn 10. If we're still alive, send it an Earthquake to KO Magnezone. Alolan Ninetales steps in. Turn 11. The 80% Stone Edge hits to knock out the opponent. Braviary joins. Turn 12. One more Stone Edge does the job. And we have taken down Professor Kukui, meaning that we have beaten Pokemon Sun and Moon using only a Sun and a Moon. Boy, <laughs> that was a tough but extremely fun challenge. I know I skipped a lot of them, but I do want to mention that we lost a total of 76 times in this challenge, just to give you an idea of the difficulty level of this run. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this content, be sure to subscribe. There's a lot more in the pipeline. I'll even spoil my next video. I'm going to be playing two Pokemon X and Y randomized Nuzlocks at the same time with the same controller. It's insane, I promise. And if you have any interest in supporting me, consider joining the channel as a member. You get early access to videos and some behind the scenes and community posts. And hey, if you've got any interesting challenge ideas, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. But for now, this is Hershey, signing off. Thanks for watching.